That's it. That's it. I've had it. I can't deal with it no more. I'm sick of these cops. Every time I go out, they harassing me. They arresting me. Tow my car. Then I got to pay a bond just to get out of jail. And I got to pay for my car. Empire. I'm sick of it. I just need... I just need one of those Monopoly get out of jail free cards. That's what I need. I need a Monopoly get out of jail free card. You know those do exist, don't you? What? A, a get out of jail free card? Yeah, we teach that in the university all the time. So you need to come on through to the university. You need to come on through to the university so we can teach you about the get out of jail free card, baby. I'm yours truly. Dave Lurie, for the UNA University, UNA Republic, we are in the house about to do the darn thing talking about. Get out of jail, free card. Talking about the trust. Let's do this, baby. Yeah. Cowboys, Biden, uh, Jamal, what's going on? User, I want y'all to say something now. I say like and share, but at least say, what's up, diva? Say something so I know you're there. Uh, I see you. Uh, uh, Azra, say hall. Uh, Marlon, what's going on? April, hit me up. Say something. Say something. And then like and share. All right. So, welcome everybody. Uh, now, I want to say something. This is on a serious tip. Um, you know about UNA America. You know about UNA Republic. We have a federal court. Now, I want you all to stay tuned because uh, we're going to need people to come to that court. This is a true federal court. I want you all to be a part of it. Yours truly is the judge of that court. Uh, I want you all to be there because uh, we want uh, all the public to see what's going down in, uh, with respect to these people and how they have been taking advantage of uh, people with mortgages and all kind of other cases. We have a mortgage case coming up, and I do want y'all there. So let's get into this. All right, I talked about the get out of jail free card. All right, what is a get out of jail free card, Diva? Okay, when we're talking about that, we're talking about a trust. Uh, some of you all have heard about a trust and what it is. I'm going to go into the documents that we use to create our trust. Sunset Beach TV, Halo, thank you for joining. Shadow, Halo, thank you for joining. Uh, once again, I want y'all to uh, say something. All right, let me know you're there. So we're going to go over the documents that we use in our trust. We're going to go over what the trust is. Now, I need to go into this first because I'm always about the spiritual side and let's recognize who we are and what we're doing in this game. All right. So what I need to for everybody to first of all understand is that um, these agencies out here that are claiming to be government, they're not truly government. And when you know how to wield certain documents when you know when you learn how to wield certain documents then um there's jurisdiction that they can no longer put you under so what has happened is these people have assumed you're under their jurisdiction 
because you have not stood up in law. You have not stood up and said who you are. You have not stood up and said, I'm a living being. All right. And because of that, they've made the assumption that you are under their jurisdiction. So once you learn to make a stand and you're not under their jurisdiction, then there are certain laws that do not pertain to you. Now, with that being said, let's understand that we are stepping into sovereignty when we do that. All right. What is sovereignty? When you're a sovereign, you are master of self, all right? You are standing under God's laws. You're standing as a sovereign being, not under someone else's jurisdiction other than God. However, let us make sure that we are clear that when you step out of uh that corporation off from under that corporation, there are still laws that you still have to respect. And those are called the universal laws and maxims of law. And if you do not have integrity, meaning you don't know how to conduct yourself without doing things that are harmful to other people, without doing things that are harmful to your community, then there is no help for you. Let's understand that you will fall and you will fall hard. If you think that these cops out here and uh, these other uh, courts or whatever, whatever these so-called laws that they're putting down are difficult and tough and harsh. If you come out of out here as a sovereign and you don't have integrity, you would have been better off staying under that system. So let's understand what goes on. For example, if you think that it's okay for you to steal something, for example, all right, under that system, you might just go to jail. All right. Under these people who claim to be government, you might just go to jail. Somebody might hit you. Somebody might, you know, do whatever, smack you. Oh, you stole something. Okay. But when you get out here as a sovereign and you do those same things, the punishment is much harsher. You might lose your life out here. So when you take on the desire to be sovereign, let's understand this is not where you can just do whatever you want to do. You can just hurt somebody over here and expect to not receive any kind of repercussions. There will be repercussions and they will be harsher than what you receive under that system. So if you don't have integrity, if you don't have respect for other people, if you don't have respect for lives, if you don't know how to respect people with your words, stay over there. You don't need to be sovereign because you're going to get yourself killed. All right. This is a serious matter when you decide to become sovereign. All right. So now. If you're ready to be sovereign, let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Now, let's get down to business. What is this get out of jail free card? What is this? Now, again, I spoke about how when you are sovereign or when you, let me rephrase that. When you are not sovereign, when you have not stood up and said that you're a living being, what has happened is that, again, you've allowed these people to make assumptions in order to get rid of their assumptions what you have to do is make your declaration about who you are. Now, I'm going to go into this because I talk about uh, this document all the time. Let's put it up. Let's put it up. It is called the Hierarchy of Law Chart. This is what we use to help people gain knowledge of self. And if you don't have it, you can go to uh, unarepublic.com forward slash docs, D-O-C-S. All right, let's pull this up. It's called the hierarchy of law chart. Very important chart so you can gain an understanding of who you are in this system. All right, so now watch this. Now, we talked about a sovereign. All right, what is a sovereign? A human being, a being that is master of self, operates under God's laws. These laws up here and universal laws. They're very important. Now, uh, they have the ability to create laws and constitutions for self and the corporations that it creates. You, as a sovereign, can create laws. 
All right. And then as sovereigns, we contract under contract law. All right. What is contract laws? These are laws that sovereigns worldwide adhere to in commerce. Now, all right, y'all getting this now? Pay attention. We in the university. All right. So understanding now that we as sovereigns, we can create laws. I want y'all to understand now. These are corporations down here. These corporations that you've been standing on when you call standing under when you call yourself a citizen. These corporations. All right. You get ready. To, you've been down here at at citizen when you're calling yourself a slave. All right. We gotta go up here to sovereign. Now. In order to stand there, first of all, you need to understand who you are. That's why you need to go and download this chart. Second of all, what we're doing is we're going to make a declaration about who we are. All right. This is very similar. Think about what the United States went through to declare its sovereignty. All right. That's why you had the Revolutionary War in that time of 17. Uh, 1776, all right, that's where there was this whole deal of the United States was going through uh, it wants, it's, depend, its independence from Britain. It was saying we're no longer under your rule. That's where, that's what was going on, where they were declaring that the United States was its own entity separate from Britain today. Britain is controlling everything, but we're not going into that right now. But let's understand the law and what you have to do so that you can stand as a sovereign. Now, the first thing is a declaration. Y'all write it down. Take notes. Write it down. Take notes. What is a declaration? A declaration is a treaty. Now, check this out. Treaty. Laws made between two sovereigns. Concerning a tract of land. All right. Remember I told you. You are made up of every element of this planet. You are walking land. And someone has been trying to control your land. You are a universe. You need to stand up and make a declaration. Concerning your land. All right. A declaration. What are you saying? I declare. And by the way, y'all go read the Declaration of Independence so you can understand what was going on. The declaration. In the declaration, you're stating who you are as a living, sovereign being. And your rights. You're saying, I am taking control of my all capital letter corporation. Now, if those, if you are here and you don't understand what a straw man is, um, you need to come into the seminar so that we can make it clear, all right? When you're born, there's a creation, all right? Your mother signs a birth certificate and some other documents giving the state permission to create an all capital letter corporation or corporate version of your upper and lower case name given to you by your mother, all right? Your mother consented to that. And so that corporation is what you have been claiming to be. You've been claiming to be a dead, fictitious corporation. You have to show that you're alive with your declaration. That's what we do. We're declaring, oh, I'm alive and I'm taking over this all capital letter corporation that my mother created for me. All right. That's first thing right here. A treaty. That's what it is. Your declaration is is a treaty between you and the county. Now, I can't go into uh, the difference between, uh, let me see, Brookshaw County versus County of Brookshaw. There is a difference. But one of those is a sovereign entity, all right? And you're making this treaty, and you're going to have that treaty between you and that county. Now, let's understand, when you become sovereign you are in the private you're in the private not the public 
And so you got to come in and because listen, I, all of these terms and topics and these ideologies, uh, they're very deep. They're entailed. I can tell you about them here, but if you really want to get deep into it and understand what's going on, which you have to understand in order to be able to stand when these agents come at you, you need to come into the UNA University. Go to unauniversity.com and check us out now. So your declaration, what you have done is to declare who you are as a living being, and it is a treaty. And I want y'all to see how high treaties stand. They are high. This is contract law right here, and this is a treaty. And this is why even we're going to talk about constitutions, which is next on the list. Even with constitution, a treaty stands above a constitution. All right? So now... Now that we've understood what a treaty is, what is a constitution? They're laws created by a sovereign that govern the corporation that is controlled by the sovereign. All right. So once again, this is your land. There's a corporation as well. And you're going to create what we call a security agreement. That's Document number two. I hope y'all taking notes. This is the money. Honey, take notes. Nostalgia, glad to have you with us. Roland, thank you for being with us. Uh, if you're in the house, uh, give a shout out. If, you, if you're appreciating this information, give a shout out. Like and share. Say something so I can know you're here. Uh, security agreement. What is the security agreement? Well, the security agreement holds all of your laws concerning not only your vessel, your landmass, your planet, but it holds all of your laws concerning your all capital letter corporation that was created by your mother. That security agreement is your constitution. The security agreement is your constitution, your set of laws. All right? So now, the third document that we use to create our trust is our UCC1 document. I hope you're writing this down. Take notes. So when you have your UCC1, all right, what that is, is stating what your federal codes are. Now, note I said codes because codes are not laws. UCC1 is also a financing statement. Y'all better be taking notes because it's going to be on the test. So UCC1 is a financing statement, all right? And what it does is give value to your corporation, your all capital letter corporation, all right? It is also a lien, so when you put your lien on record for your corporation, what you have stated, what you have stated is that you, your corporation has a value and that no one can do business with your corporation unless they come through you first and pay you the funds that you have said your corporation is worth first. Those are called federal codes. A UCC is a federal code, all right? What are federal codes? Let's take a look at it. Took my glasses off so I could see this. All right, so can y'all see this? Federal codes. Codes which corporations within corporations uh, codes that are created for corporations within corporations. Now, let me explain this because this is uh, uh, UCC-1 uh, or UCC documents are considered federal documents. All right, this is low we go. This is as low as we go right here. We're not dealing with corporations and their code statutes and ordinances. I need y'all to understand something. All right, go back here to Constitution. When you create your constitution, your constitution stands higher than the constitution for the United States of America or of the United States of America or of the United States. Those are three different documents, people. Your constitution stands above all of that. 
So this is why it's important for you to create your own documents. Federal codes, these are UCCs, all right? You, you have your own federal code document where you're stating several things. First of all, you're stating what the value of your corporation is. You're putting a lien on your corporation, all right? And you're also stating in your UCCs what your violation of rights fee schedule is. What does that mean, a violation of rights fee schedule? Well, again, this is land. And just like when we're in Monopoly, we're playing Monopoly, and you, you land on Park Place, well, if you land on Park Place, then you got to pay a whole bunch of money for landing on Park Place. Well, my rights of this land are also property. When you land on them, when you violate them, you have to pay. Well, that's we put that fee schedule on record with our UCC so that those who are playing out in this game, these agents know ahead of time how much it is if you land on Park Place, baby. Fee schedule. So you got to understand how to create your documents and where to put them on record, how to put them on record, and then put these people on notice. Lastly, there's a trust, the trust package that goes along with that, all right? And this is when we're putting our trust under federal jurisdiction, federal jurisdiction. Now, a lot of people are unaware of what federal jurisdiction is or how powerful it is, and this is why I tell my people we carry stamps, all right? We carry registered mail labels, and we use them, all right? We use them. We use our stamps. We use our registered mail labels. This puts our documents under federal jurisdiction. These stamps and these registered mail labels are highly powerful, highly powerful, and you use them because uh, a lot of people think that federal government, oh, it's this and that. Let's understand what federal means. Federal means a covenant with God. Federal means a covenant with God. And these people out here have taken, taken oaths, and at the end of that oath, it says, so help me God. Well, who, they're supposed to be protecting God's property. Who is God's property? You. All of us, we're God's property. And they recognize that. So when, when you're recognizing how they're supposed to be protecting you, really the federal government is us. It, it really is us. Anybody talking about federal property, then that belongs to the people. Hey, Mark. Let me see. Balaj, thank you for joining Inspire Me, thank you for joining Birch Knight and Barrett, thank you. Now, so in understanding that, all right, federal, when you're putting things under federal protection, that gives, that means that if, if, if anybody is tampering with it, if anybody is tampering with your vessel, your land, anybody is tampering with your rights, they are tampering with federal property. Y'all know what happens when somebody tampers with mail, for example? Let, let, me, let me show you something. This is a trust. All right. And we carry these with us. These stamps. This instrument. These are instruments. All right. We call them instruments or federal instruments. These stamps. Anybody messes with... Willa, I don't understand. Please make it clear what you're saying. What is this? I don't understand. All right, so now, when you see these instruments, these are federal instruments. So anybody tampers with anything concerning this package, and this is a trust. Anybody tampers with the laws that are within here, tampers with anything dealing with this package, you might as well be tampering with the mail. What kind of federal crime is that? How many years in prison does that come with? So now, 
what I'm saying to you is there's a lot of power in trust and understanding law and understanding how to uh, put yourself under trust. With all of that being said, with great power comes great responsibility. And so make sure that if you are wanting to become sovereign, if you're wanting to become, yes, blue, blue cares, it is a federal offense. But if you're wanting to become sovereign, make sure that you have integrity. Make sure that you are a responsible individual. Make sure you're not someone out here willing to just hurt somebody just because or hurt somebody for any reason. Because again, the repercussions for doing dirt out here as a sovereign are much higher. If you don't have integrity, stay where you are. All right, I'm reading this. Uh, Hollywood says, what is this? What is this, Hollywood? What do you mean, what is this? This is how you become sovereign. Now, if you don't know, perhaps this, this is not for you. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mark, let's see who else is in here. And please feel free to ask any questions if you have any. Uh, I'm here for my class tonight and we're ready to load up who else has any questions let's see what what is this live about mark uh, or hollywood let me get you to uh go back and review it but just for those who might be coming in with mark uh or hollywood rather this session is about trust and putting yourself under trust this session is about uh how you are declaring that you are a living being, all right? When we talk about a get-out-of-jail-free card, the trust is your get-out-of-jail-free card. So let me give you some examples. When I have students and clients who have uh, gotten their trust established and established who they are with their declaration, which is their treaty, their uh, security agreement, which is their constitution, and their UCC, which is their federal code. When they've done all of those things and put them into place, and some of these agents might come at them and uh, maybe kidnap them, which is what it is when a cop comes at you and kidnaps you when you're sovereign, then they try to put, the, put them in the system, and they look in the system and they find out, oh, these people are protected. These people are uh, under trust. They're not in our system. Well, that's, that's that get out of jail free card. They have to let you go because you have declared who you are. Thank you, hair health herbalist. All right. So now, does anybody else have any questions before I get out of here? And uh, all of my students, I want to say welcome and thank you. That's uh, hair health herbalist is one of my students. I want to say thank you for joining. You can catch us here on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, for now. All right. Let me see. Who else has any questions? What do I need to do? <laughs> Roland, you need to join the UNA University. All right. Go to UNAUniversity.com. Uh, you can also hit me up on Diva Larie, uh at Facebook, on Facebook. And uh, once again, yo, if you haven't caught this whole video, watch the whole video because the being a sovereign is not just, oh, I'm going to get out of jail free. I get to do whatever I want to do. Um, you know, no, you got to, you got to, there's a lot of responsibility to this and you have to know how to stand. Let me go into that uh, before I get out of here. Uh, when we are, you know, becoming sovereign. It's not just about paperwork. You don't just go, I'm going to fill this out, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign this, and then I'm, I'm going to send it in. No, you, you got to know what the law is. This is why when you come into the university, we go over all these things. What is the universal law? This is very important. Universal laws. Because these right here, this is where everything starts. Universal law deals with whatever energies you put out must come back. A lot of us don't get the spiritual side of this game. We think it's all just about paperwork. But let me help you understand something. If your spiritual energy is not right, if you are not right within, I don't care what you do out here. I don't care what kind of document 
and she said, I don't care what kind of law you think you know, you will be taken down. Because there's always energies to repay. And that's what, why we are in this mess. A lot of us will be thinking, oh, my ancestors, my ancestors, uh, 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 they did some dirt. And they caused us to have this bad energy. You are your ancestor. See, I got to go deep then. I got to start talking about the spiritual side because that's very important. A lot of people get in this game. And this is another reason why. I can't come out here and just blab this off to everybody because people will take, these are some powerful, very powerful techniques. And they'll take these techniques and they'll use them to harm other people. I can't have that. You got to come into the university so we can make sure we got your energies right. Because I've had too many people to do things uh, that are harmful to people with these techniques just because they think they can do it. Let me tell you something. Let me let me go into this while I'm I'm here and waiting on anybody who has any other questions. Listen up. When you are sovereign, you are saying what well, sovereign, master of self. Master of self. This means you're not dependent on anybody. This means you're not dependent on the government. So when I have people tell me, "Diva, I can't pay my bills because this CBD thing, and I'm going to put a lien on such and such because I can't pay it. You know, so I, and, uh, is, is this your property you're going to put a lien on? Well, no, no, it ain't, it ain't my property, but you know, I can't pay because this CBD thing, and I, I ain't, you know, I ain't got no money. At, then you're not sovereign. You're not ready to be sovereign because when you're sovereign, you're not concerned about what a so called government does. You know how to make money. Sovereigns know how to make money, create money. That's what we do. So if you're not in that state, then stay where you are. No, but when you know, when you know that you are ready to be sovereign, you know how to go out and make money and do your own thing, regardless of what these people out here doing, you know how to flip the script for yourself. Then you sovereign. All right. So, yes, you need I need you to come into the university because I want to make sure your energies are right before you get these techniques and these tools. And then you start doing things and you destroy yourself because I've had people that have done that. And when you listen again, the universal law, when you put out that energy, when you go and put a lockdown on somebody else's property. You got to pay. Even though the, the cops can't get you, the judge can't get you, the courts can't get you, the universe is going to balance every energy that you put out. Every last one of them. So there is no somebody helping you and coming to your rescue when you've done dirt. You're going to get the energy back. And that's why we have to be clear about the, the all of these laws. These are the highest laws. We got to be clear about these. All right. So now, uh, I had, let me go back to this question. Let me make sure I answer this question. If y'all serious, serious on joint, joining the university, send her a message. You can go to uh, UNA, uh, send me a message on Diva Larie on Facebook, D-I-V-A-L-Y-R-I on Facebook, or you can check me out at DivaLarie.com, D-I-V-A-L-Y-R-I.com. Roland says, I totally agree with you. Thank you, Roland. I appreciate somebody, somebody agree with Diva. Thank you. Uh, let's see, who else? Thank you for sharing the live, Jamal. All right, so now, do I have any other questions before I get out of here? Don't forget, um, I we do have a session coming up on the 8th of, the 8th of uh, December, and it's going to be a very real case. It's a federal court. Uh, yours truly, Diva Larie. I am the judge of that court, the UNA Federal Court. And it's a case dealing with um, a mortgage whereby the United States District Court has failed to hear the case. Well, we're going to hear the case. And so I want you all to be there, the public to be there, uh, so that uh, we can make it clear to these people that we're standing up, all right? We're doing this under what laws? These are under the maxims of law that we're, we're running this court, 
under the maxims and universal law, of course, always universal law is going to be there, but we're dealing with the maxims, the maxims, these laws come directly from the Bible. Now I had this, you know what? I want to go into this while I'm waiting on somebody to ask a question because, uh, my producer is telling me, keep going. Somebody got questions. All right. Listen, I had somebody, I was talking about Ham, Shem, and Japheth because, you know, we got this whole issue about anti-Semitic and what that is. And I explained what anti-Semitic is. And somebody comes on saying, uh, uh, Noah didn't exist. And Ham, Shem, and Japheth didn't exist. It's all allegorical and blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen up. I need y'all to understand something. Uh, yes, the Bible is allegorical. It is also historically accurate. It is also a history book, a dietary law book, a legal book, a math book, an astrology book. It's all of that. Y'all need to listen. Yes, the Bible has this got some lies in it. Let's, let's be clear about that. The scriptures were written way long ago. The Bible is a new construct where somebody took the scriptures and put them in a canon or a book. Well, as they were putting them into that book, they've rewritten them and redacted and changed. And some of the sexes are not the same of the people. And they uh, took the stories out and, and swished them around. Oh, yeah. But they could not leave out the most important basis of the book. Where do the scriptures come from, people? I need y'all to listen up and listen carefully. The scriptures were around long before the Bible came into play. Who wrote the scriptures? I want y'all to look up sibyls and oracles. Sibyls and oracles. And I need y'all to understand that these were not no Albions or so-called white people doing this. If anybody's telling you that, oh, the Bible was written by the white man, y'all haven't, they haven't read the book. Because I'm going to say, I'm going to get out of here because I got to go into class. Listen up. Uh, if you read the book, I'm going to give you two reasons why it couldn't have been written by white, so-called white people. All right, listen up. The book of Revelations talks about how the white, so-called white people will die in a lake of fire. The book of Revelation says that so-called white people will die in a lake of fire. Then that's in the New Testament. Go in the Old Testament and it says in numbers, it says clearly white skin is a curse. In the book of Numbers, it says white skin is a curse. Now, excuse me, but if I were a white person, and I'm saying white because they're not really white, but I'm using that term for those who don't have an understanding of what the term really means. But if I was a white person, ain't no way those two books, book of revelations in the new Testament and book of numbers in the old Testament, uh, they wouldn't be in that Bible. I would have ripped those to shreds and burned them up and put them under something, the rug, whatever. Cause there ain't no way I would have those two books that degrade the very essence of who I am to stay in a book that I supposedly wrote. Either they dumb as hell or they didn't write the book. And I'm suggesting to you, they didn't write the book. Because again, when we talk about the Council of Nicaea, those were melanated folks. All right. I didn't mean to go into that because somebody wrote that and they were talking about what this book is. Now, I'm going back to this right here. Laws of Max. I need y'all to understand how powerful the Bible is. It is a very, very powerful book. Yes, there are lies in it. However, if you learn to take this book, because it, it, is, it governs everything in our society. It governs everything in our society. And when you're going into a court of so-called law, what they telling you to do? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you 
God, and they got you putting your hand on the Bible. That's what they used to have. Now they want to take the Bible out. Y'all better have them to bring the Bible back in. That's all right. Because Diva Libri, I bring my own Bible. I send it in to them and I let them know this is my Bible right here with all these laws. Because when you are swearing on this, they got to swear on it. What are these laws of maxim that we're talking about? These are your God-given rights. God-given. Even if you don't believe in God, if you walk into a courtroom, I'm going to suggest you shut your face. Do not be coming out about, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in it. Shut up. Shut up. Why? Because you're giving away all of your power. Because just because you don't believe that there's a God, they do. If they telling you, swear, so help you God, they believe there's a God. You need to find out what the laws of this God are. What are the laws? And I don't care what you call your God. Well, what, who is God? What, the, what they, what they kind of, could God mean government of the day? Or whatever the hell they want to say God mean. Let me tell you something. When it comes to these maxims of law, I don't care what God you stand under, what they do, th these guys, they say, you got the right to travel this planet of your own free will. You got the right to travel this planet without governmental documentation. You got the right to bear arms. You got the right to protect yourself. You got the right to not be forced into a contract. I'm, I don't care what this God is. I like this God right here. Whatever this God is right here giving me all these rights that I give up when I claim to be a citizen down here. So you down here claiming to be a citizen and you want to talk trash about oh, oh, the Bible is this. Shut the hell up and learn what this guy said about what your rights are. Because as soon as you do, as soon as you do, then you start wielding your power. You ain't got no power down here. You ain't got no power down here. And don't walk into a damn courtroom talking about, uh, 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 I don't believe in, in the guy. To, oh, what? Oh, well, good then. Well, let me go ahead and lock you up right now because you don't have nobody protecting you. Okay. Going on, this person says that the Bible is not real and all this, whatever. Okay, listen, y'all do your research. At least read the book. I'm not telling you to believe in it. I'm telling you to know what's in it because that's the only way that you can wield the power that goes along with knowing what's in the book. Pay attention now. Down here, these people right here, these corporations, they can only create code statutes and ordinances where you up here as a sovereign can create laws. You as a sovereign can create laws. They can only create codes, statutes, and ordinances. Now, the code statutes and ordinances that these people create right here are exactly opposite to the laws that are given to you by God. So what happens is they create some code statutes and ordinances so that they can take away the rights that are given to you by God. These people down here, they tell you, oh, uh, we're going to vote for a gun law. Where God said, there ain't no vote. You got the right to bear arms. These people think they want to take away your right to bear arms. Now, I'm not a gun person by any means. However, if you want to carry one, then that's your God-given right. But these people telling you, no, nah, you get to vote on whether or not the people, okay. All, again, all of your rights that they know that you have, they know that you have inherited, inherited God-given rights. They got to create a law, a code, a statute, and an ordinance to take it away. So if you don't understand how powerful the Bible is and it can work for you, then you stay down here as a citizen and get some privileges. The privilege to drive when God said you got the right to drive. All right, let me see if I got any questions. Uh, blue car, blue car. Blue Cares, uh, hit me up at Diva Larie, D-I-V-A-A-L-R-R-I on Facebook if you want to get started. Uh, we do have a class coming up. Uh, it's called Back to Basics. It's going to be starting in January if you want to be a part of that. Once again, hit me up at Diva Larie, uh, D-I-V-A-A-L-R-R-I on Facebook. There are lies in it, you say. Critical, critical Sam. Go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's have this conversation. Absolutely, there are lies in the Bible. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to give you one of the main ones. Um, 
there is no way for a female to come from a male. That don't happen. That's a lie. All right. Now, there the the thing about the Bible, I encourage you, if you want to get a less tampered with version of what the stories are in the Bible, go to the book of Jasher. Also, if you want to get uh, other outside information about where the references of the Bible might have come from, check out the book of Enki. All right, because that whole rib story, it goes a different way. It tell it gives you more detail on what was going on with respect to Adam and Eve and what they were going through and what the so-called gods were going through uh, to create these beings. So you got to read, you got to go deeper uh, so that you can have an understanding of what's really going on with respect to the Bible. Uh, where do you get this backdrop? Uh, thank you, uh, Hagi, ha Hagley. Go to unarepublic.com forward slash Docs, D as in David, O as in Oscar, C as in Charlie, S as in Sam, unarepublic.com forward slash docs. All right. And you can get this list, this uh, hierarchy of law list. Again, this is very important in understanding where you stand in this game. This is a hierarchy from top down. All right. Of the so-called laws, starting with the universal law. And at the bottom, we got citizens which is a slave, all right? So you can go and get that, and that is free. Uh, and this helps us to understand where we stand with respect to law. Do I have any other questions before I get out of here? I want to say thank y'all for joining. I love y'all. I appreciate seeing all y'all wonderful, wonderful comments and the flowers and the, the likes and the hearts. Y'all are beautiful peoples. Uh, I'm yours truly, Diva Laree. Once again, you can uh, check us out at unarepublic.com and also unauniversity.com. And of course, uh, you can find me at divalaree.com as well. Uh, do I have any other questions? Let me see. Same guy said, you are, so are you saying there are lies in the Bible? Yes. And... And that is scriptures and verses. Yes. And by the way, so I tell you, um, when it comes to the prophecies in the Bible, uh, let's recognize that uh, there, these were uh, sibyls and oracles. These were melanated women that were writing these scriptures. All right. Now, I go into the history of uh, the planet and we make sure we understand that this, the original order on the planet was matriarchy. Women were running everything. All right. And so it was women who had all the wealth and the knowledge and the land and everything was in their name. But those of y'all who do, who are not buying this, I don't agree with you. And the women won't run it. Go to uh, unarepublic.com forward slash docs, that website I told you about, and pull down the Iroquois Confederacy. This was the original constitution of those, the people who are in this land known as the Americas. That constitution shows you that everything was owned by the women. And we're just talking about in the 1400s, it was under the order of women. Everything was under the order of women. And a man couldn't own anything unless he was a woman. All right. So what has happened with the Bible is that the man has taken the scriptures and the, the documents of the woman, women and written her out of her own creation. Those were those scriptures. Those come from the women. Now the women are not victims because they did dirt. We're not going into that. That's when I go into the history of what really happened on this planet. But the, the original people writing everything, they were women and they were melanated. All right. And so we've got the man, the male that came in and created the Bible, wrote her out of her own scriptures. And if you go back and you do your own research, you start reading these stories. Somebody look up the uh, story of Solomon. And he talks about who really led the Israelites out of Egypt. Who was that? That was a female. But the Bible is telling you it was Moses. I ain't going into it. That's another story. Y'all need to stay tuned. Because we got it going on right here with all the information. What really happened on this planet? I, I told you a little bit, uh, Divine, because I'd have to go deep, deep. And uh, <laughs> I, I got to get ready for my class. All my students load up into the UNA University. I want to love uh, say thank you. I love you uh, for joining us on this session. Today, we have Back to Basics. Mm -hmm.
We're going to have a Backs of Basics in January. If you want to be a part of it, you need to go to UNA University or hit me up, all right, on Facebook, Diva Larie, on Facebook. What about if you're fighting for full custody? Yes, uh, Mon- Monet, uh, join us and become a part of our classes, all right, because we show you how to take custody of your child. All of this deals with trust. Join us so we can help you to stand like the God that you are. Yes, you are. All right. We got a lot going on. Diva, I want y'all to join us for our next session. We're going to be here tomorrow at, what, 7, 7 p.m. 7, 6, 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Send us a message. I'll be glad to answer your questions. I'm out. Diva, hold on. Let me put my... I don't know what that is.